Today I'm going to show you exactly how to do the goblet squat step by step so that you know how to do one of the most effective exercises to keep you strong, lean and energized. Let's get into it. So the first thing I'm going to go through is upper body mechanics and stance to allow you to perform this movement as safely and effectively as possible. And so what we want to do is we want to get the rib cage and the hip in a stacked position. So your rib cage needs to be pretty much directly over your hip. So you don't want to be tilting the tailbone back and arching the back excessively as you squat because then we've got a huge energy leak here. So we want to bring the tailbone down and bring the rib cage down slightly. And you'll already feel that your glutes are in tension there and that you've got a nice strong position in your back. And that's how you're going to perform the squat. But that's the first thing that I want you to get right. Get your rib cage stacked on top of your pelvis by just bringing the tailbone down slightly and bringing the rib cage down ever so slightly. So the next thing I want to go through is dumbbell placement. And so what we're going to do is we're going to firstly start with a dumbbell that's fairly light. We don't want anything too challenging at this point when we've not really learned to master the movement. So get a nice and light dumbbell. And what we're going to do is we're going to hold it by pulling it into the chest. Now remember that stacked rib cage position. You just want to make sure that the chest is down slightly, not excessively, just kind of in a neutral position here tailbone is down okay now I pull the dumbbell in to my chest because I feel when I do that the muscles around my spine are activating so if I hold it a bit further away from me it's more of a burden on my shoulders here but if I hold it nice and close less of a burden and I feel the muscles around the back here tightening up okay so this is where we want to hold it the dumbbells in full control here with almost bringing it into our body it's a part of our body and that's going to ensure that you've created some initial tightness through the spine before you go into your squat. This is a key one, stance and foot angle. What we're essentially looking for here is comfort, okay? Whatever stance is most comfortable for you because everyone's got different length femurs, probably asymmetrical hips. I say that because my hips are very asymmetrical. And so it's gonna completely alter what is a good stance for you. So this is very individual. So what I'd do if I was you is I would just Firstly, just get into a stance where your toes are out because we want to try and get the knees to go out when we're squatting. And that's gonna give you a nice stable base at the bottom. And it's gonna allow you to just use that ex um, explosive base to push up. Can you get depth in that position? And you might need to play around with a few stances just to see where you get depth. So if I just go, for example, toes forwards and a bit wider and I try and go for depth, it's not happening right hip immediately locks up, left hip can probably go, okay? That's because of my asymmetries. But if I turn my toes out slightly, I'm getting a bit more depth, but it doesn't feel as comfortable. Now here's the weird one, here's one of my um, quirks. If I turn my right foot out slightly, which is how I do do my heavy squats, I've got lots of depth, and actually that's a nice strong position for me. So just play around with your foot positions. Try and focus on driving the knees out and whatever position allows you to get your knees to go out and your hips to go down, that's gonna be the best thing for you. What we're going to do now is before we start the ascent, we just need to focus on creating tension and what we do before we go down. So I'm just gonna bring this dumbbell into position. So we now know we need to pull this in nice and tight chest down slightly, tailbone down. I'm getting, gonna get into my comfortable stance. So if you come round to the front here, you'll be able to see that my um, right foot is slightly out, but for you, just focus on turning the toes out slightly. And then from here, what we're going to do is try and screw the feet into the floor. And once you do that, so um, to do that, I just need to turn my heels into the floor and I'm actually pulling my toes into the floor as well. Here I've, I've essentially gripped the floor. And in this position, I'm in a really strong position to go down, but most importantly, really push up through my feet. Because uh, you want the, your feet to be in contact with the floor at all points. So here, turn your feet into the floor, rib cage is down, tailbone is down. And then the next point, I'm gonna show you how to descend. So the key with the descent, guys, is to ensure that when we go down, we're going down with control and we're keeping the knees going out whilst keeping the chest extended, okay? We don't want it flopping down. And so what we're going to do is assume the start position, which we now know exactly how to do, and then 
Now that my toes are in position, this is gonna allow me to drive the knees out. And then what I want you to think, guys, is to sit back and sit down, okay? Sit back, sit down, knees go out. In that position, the chest stays up, okay? And then from here, we need to keep that tension as we ascend, okay? So I'm just gonna do that as a normal rep. Obviously, I slowed that down. But what I'm doing here is knees out, sitting back and down, and then up. But I'm keeping tension all the way through. You don't wanna be relaxed when you drop, okay? Because then we've got no tension, and it makes it very hard to get up, and you can get up awkwardly. You wanna keep as much tension through the body as possible, because that allows you to come up in an effective and safe manner, okay? So that's how to do the descent. Now I'm gonna tell you the cue for the ascent. So for the ascent, we just need to make sure that the movement is sequenced as efficiently as possible. And what I mean there, guys, is essentially the joints are moving all at the same time, which is pretty much the same for the descent. So when I'm in this position here, we don't want hips to move before back, things like that, because that means that certain muscles are gonna be way overactive, some are gonna be underactive, and you might not perform that lift as effectively as possible. And so we just need to make sure that things are moving at the same time, okay? So obviously the key for the ascent part of the squat is to just come out of it. So what we're going to do, and what I want you guys to think as you do that, which is gonna help with the sequencing, is dumbbell to ceiling or head to ceiling. So I'm gonna get into position, which we've gone through. I'm gonna go into my nice controlled descent, and now I'm just thinking dumbbell to the sky. And that allows me to keep my back straight and doesn't allow other things to move that shouldn't do. Because if I start to think about the hips going up and things like that, I'm still looking at, at the ground. Okay, that's not a nice squat. But if we just think dumbbell to the ceiling, that allows everything to move in this nice straight line, okay? And so we're essentially just moving up and down with gravity. So the descent was sit down and back. The ascent is dumbbell to sky. And that's how you perform the squat. Now, at the end of the squat, what we need to make sure happens is that as we come up, it's nice explosive, and we lock out slightly. And you should feel your bum squeeze nice and tightly at the top of the movement there. So control, sit back and down, and dumbbell to sky, squeezing the bum. And when I do that, I'm actually just thinking about just thrusting the hips because we don't want to lean back like this, okay? You want to end in this neutral position here, dumbbell to sky, bum squeezed, and I'm ready to just keep on repping that out. So that's how you do the ascent part of the squat. So what's gonna bring all of the squat pattern that we've just shown together is, is your breathing. So what we're going to do is, usually I would brace for a big heavy squat, which is where you're taking breath into the stomach, expanding it out, holding it. But I'm just gonna assume that you're beginners and that you've not done too much breath work. So what we're going to do is we're just gonna focus on, on the way down, we breathe in. On the way up, we breathe out. Okay? And so when we're breathing in, we wanna really breathe into the stomach. It's not a shallow breath, it's a nice deep breath in. So I'm just gonna go with a dumbbell. So I'm breathing in and I breathe out. And that's simply how we're gonna connect the movement together with our breath. So there you have it guys, that's how to goblet squat. The thing obviously that limits you with a goblet squat is the fact that you are going to be limited by shoulder strength. So as this gets heavier, as you get more and more proficient, it's gonna be time for you to progress onto the next movement. And the next movement is going to be the barbell squat. So please tap on the video that's showing up on the screen now that's gonna show you step by step exactly how to do the barbell squat. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video.